Hey everybody, NFI Hammer here. Welcome to my beginner painting journey and everything Warhammer 40k. In this episode, I will be painting my very first ever Lich Guard, which are elite protectors of the Necron nobility. These dudes look really cool and indifferent to the other Necron infantry, so I'm super excited to get into this and start painting. So if you're wanting to watch a step-by-step -step journey, you've come to the right place. All right, let's get started. Hey everybody, um, today we are going to be making five Lich Guard units. I've been very excited about this unit because they are very different to Necron Warriors. You know, the kind of gets a little bit tiring as a beginner. You know, you, you have to build 20 Necron Warriors to get your battle line units ready. And then you do five or 10 Immortals. 10 better because you get more chance to, you know, revive and your leaders take more advantage um, of it. And then flayed ones, if you've had the horrendous experience of having to build those, they're pretty much just five warriors, but with like all these fiddly little pieces. Anyway, I digress, you know. Um, so this unit excited me because I think they're really interesting with their shields and their weapons aren't guns. You know, Necrons don't have a lot of melee units, um, at least not in the infantry. So yeah, I was really excited to try something a little bit different and get into it. Essentially, the lore of these little dudes are that they're the elite protectors of like the nobility class and that their sort of necrodermis, like their skeleton, is as tough as any like lord and stuff. Um, and they're, you know, tougher than immortals and they don't even have the capacity to like disobey orders and stuff. So, yeah, really interesting. Um, they're fairly easy to put together. However, when I started gluing them, uh, my glue uh, citadel thing that I've had now for about 18 months, no glue was coming through. And I had heard about this trick where you grab the pliers out of you know your toolbox and you grab the little tubey doobie whacker, that's the technical name for it, and you run that under a flame just so that any of the glue in there gets burnt off. And just make sure not to touch it because it's very hot. And what that does is it kind of burns away and melts any of the glue. And then hopefully when you put it back in, um, you, you know, it's all working again. And so this trick has actually been pretty helpful for me. I think this is the second or third time I've been blocked on like trying to glue things and it's really frustrating. Um, so it's great to be able to just quickly get glue out. So now that the glue was fixed, uh, the rest of the assembly was pretty straightforward. These are one of the um, easier kits, I reckon, that aren't pushpin. You know, there's actually very chunky, well-sized pieces that fit well together. I actually decided to do something a little bit different and I did not end up gluing the shield or the weapon onto the model, which I usually do. I just thought because the shield's so detailed, you know, it's gonna be very hard to paint um, when it's already assembled and like positioned. So we'll see how that goes um, as the video progresses. But as you saw at the very beginning of this video, I got these models from the Imperium magazine uh, which was spread across two different issues. So it ended up costing $40 dues in Australian money, which is about a 33% discount from buying it from a retailer. They sell it around $60. But I really wish it was cheaper because they can also be built as Triarch Praetorians and they also look really awesome and different. And I would have really liked the opportunity to build five of those. Maybe I can see if I can secure some more, um, you know, magazine issues so that I can give that a go. One thing I noticed, which is what I had with my death marks and my immortals, is that there's quite a significant gap in the shoulder blades um, section. And when you paint it, it kind of forces a really obvious crack 
in those shoulder blades. So I had recently bought some green stuff and I was gonna try and give this a go. Um, and you can see here as well in my shield that um, I had taken a big chunk out of one of them when I cut it off from the sprue. So with this green stuff, uh, you know, you only need a really tiny amount of this to get going. I actually end up taking off way more than I needed. You know, even half this would have been enough. Um, so I need to find a way of maybe just getting a tiniest bit of it removed. But you just roll it up in your hands um, to form little green balls. I guess that's why it's called green stuff. And then you can apply that into the cracks and crevices of the shoulder blades and trying to bridge that gap. It is kind of really difficult to work with. I use a combination of um, toothpicks and the back of my um, cutting hobby knife, uh, just trying to really get it worked in there. And then to smooth things over, I use the hobby knife to kind of just cut away any excess green stuff that's kind of stuck onto the shoulder blades. Otherwise it's gonna cause a very uneven pattern when I'm painting it. At this point, uh, my cat Luna wanted to know what was going on, so she demanded pats and managed to knock all of my new lich guard away and stuff. It was very cute, but also equally annoying. Um, she hasn't really done this for a while, so I thought it was uh, only fair if I gave her the attention and scritches that she was asking for. And not to be outdone, my little demon, Nurgling, Nurgle demon cat Artemis wanted to get some action as well because he can't let uh, Luna have anything that she enjoys on her own. So he had to come up for some things, but he just got distracted by the light and everything. So he's a bit chaotic in nature. Back to the painting at hand. So this was the one shield that I was just getting impatient um, at this point and a bit tired. I probably should have just taken a break but I just wanted to get it done and when I had clipped it from the sprue I kind of misjudged the angle that my clippers were and ended up taking a little chunk out of the side of the shield. So I was hoping that I could use some of this green stuff here to patch that hole. And it kind of worked better than I was expecting. You know, it did require a bit of carving um, just to get the smoothness right with my hobby knife. And then in the back, there's these like little crevices that go down the edges. Um, so I just used the knife to kind of etch out that same hole. But yeah, it was um, really good in the end. I'll show you a picture after it's been primed. So this is kind of what it looked like with the green stuff um, applied. It's a little bit messy. I still think I have a lot more um, area to improve on this skill, but I definitely think it's a worthwhile step to do. And yeah, the shield, it's still a little bit damaged, um, which you can kind of, you know, explain with like a law thing, you know, the, the shield's taken some beating, but at least it's not this big giant circle chunk. So to uh, get the prime, I just put it outside, make sure you're wearing a mask. And here I'm using my flat black uh, Rust-Oleum primer that I got from Bunnings. And I also got a snag while I was there, which is a sausage and bread for the non-Aussies, uh, which is a Bunnings delicacy. And I probably applied too much here and the spray, but I really wanted to make sure I had a good coverage of everything. After priming, it's time to get into painting. So I've noticed with these Lich Guard that they actually have like more recesses and grooves than normal Necron Warriors, Immortals or Death Marks. So rather than just having those grooves the same, you know, brass color or whatever color or black, I thought I'd try and paint these recesses uh, with the moot green color. I was tossing up between Warpstone Glow or Moot Green, but I think Moot Green uh, is a little bit brighter, so when you're painting it on black, uh, you don't have to do as many coats for it to stand out. 
So I'm painting these little thigh sections, leg sections, as well as uh, he has got this little uh, belt section in here that I'm not quite sure what color I'm gonna paint that. And then on the uh, weapon, there's a handle that I'm gonna paint these little grooves um, green. And then the big one is on the shield. So around the outside of the shield, uh, there's these sort of divider sections that I'm trying to paint in those cracks, as well as the main circular emblem. I'm trying to get all those recesses. And I'm not trying too hard to keep things neat um, because I know I'm gonna have to come back over it anyway with a different color. Um, but obviously if you've got better brush control than me, which isn't hard, you know, avoiding painting that is always a good option. And then the next color is the Rune Lord Brass, which is the Sharakan Dynasty theme bread and butter. You know, this is the most painful and um, boring of all the steps. I'm also using like my shittest uh, brush that I own. I really uh, should probably throw this one in the bin. And Artemis is trying to attack me as well. So I've got all the odds stacked against me from trying to keep this nice and clean. Uh, the reason why I use my paw brushes is because I've been told that the metallic paints ruin brushes so I try not to use my more expensive brushes but because I'm doing Necrons like pretty much everything is <laughs> metallic so I don't really know why I bother um, but I'm just painting the you know the middle section at the bottom and the top section here I'm gonna do the others in a silver color later and then don't forget the back of the shield as well uh, because it is very visible when the unit is holding it. I'm not worrying though about it being as neat. I'm just kind of applying brass everywhere. And then you want to apply brass to the thighs, uh, the you know calves, the feet of the Necron warrior. This is the very boring part. And then you also want to do the chest. I leave these kind of um, rib cage section black. However, because I'm using a bad brush, I ended up actually painting them all brass. I'm gonna have to come back later and try and fix that up. I have seen some cool uh, warriors on Instagram where people have uh, painted those uh, little sections green and you know give it kind of a Necron Gauze Energy Glow, which is a really cool idea. But I feel like it's a bit late in my army um, to start changing the scheme at this late stage. And then also don't forget the arm of the weapon also needs to be the brass color as well. Then the next color that you use in Cherokin is this lead belcher color. So this is kind of what I use for any sort of delicate metal in the Necron body. So here I'm painting the leg pipes here, or leg, leg tubes. I guess they'd be the tibia and the fibia if they were a human body. And then I also do the guts that I call it, but it's like the wires hanging in the stomach of the Necron warrior. And then you want to do the tube of the weapon and just trying to leave as much of that green uh, paint as possible there. And then you want to do the wrist bones of the arm as well. And for the body, uh, it has a spine at the back of the uh, Lich Guard. And I have been doing this thing since I started painting my race where I paint every second vertebrae silver and leave every second one black. Uh, which is like a bandy bandy snake in Australia. But I just find that it kind of creates a little bit of visual interest. But obviously if you paint them all silver or leave them all black or do whatever you like, obviously, then you can't forget the middle sections of the shield. So again, I'm trying to avoid getting any paint into the green sections, um, but I'm not very good at that. But I am hoping that this kind of creates a bit of visual interest by having the brass and the silver together and then you don't want to forget the back of the shield which I keep forgetting and painting kind of like that column section down the bottom and just painting kind of those little clasps uh, silver and I also keep forgetting that there's a hand on the back 
of the shield so you want to paint the wrist and for now I'm also kind of just painting most of the top section silver as well just because I'm not really sure what I'm going to do here yet. Next colour is Runefang Steel. So I use this typically to denote seniority and like the immortals um, on the shoulder pads. So these uh, units also kind of have these weird leg pads. I don't know what you'd <laughs> call these. Um, so I thought it was only fitting if these are also painted in this very bright silver colour and obviously the shoulder pads as well to so keep them um, in line with my Necron Immortals. I'm just trying not to get too much of this paint in places that I don't want it. I find that this paint texture kind of reminds me of that marshmallow fluff stuff. It's kind of very weird texture. I don't have any other of my paints um, behave like this and it does require a few solid coats to get good coverage up. And once you're finished with the body of the Lich Guard, then it's time to do the shield. So with the shield, I'm just painting that middle uh, circle section here, as I think that'll really like draw the eye and have this really bright um, ornate section in the middle. I'm trying to avoid uh, getting any into the green sections, but I'm failing miserably here as well, which is a bit of a theme of this video. I just don't know, I think I'm just not in the, the mindset or something, but I keep making so many mistakes on this one. And I'm just trying to uh, touch it up here, but it kind of comes together at the end and it's looking pretty good. And then again, I'm not really quite sure what I'm doing with these column sections, but I thought I'd kind of paint the front clasps um, the same Runefang steel silver. Moving on to gold, which I use Retributor Armor, but I think any gold color would really work here. I kind of paint his, you know, Celtic kilt sporran thing at the front, whatever you want to call it, little tassel thing, gold, um, just because I feel like we've already done brass, silver already, and I feel like, you know, Necrons love a bit of bling, so why not? I'm also not really sure what I'm going to do with this, like, belt buckle thing here either so I paint that gold um, but yeah hopefully I'll come up with a better idea as I go and I've realized that the model I'm painting is actually the one with the boring um, crown one out of the five has this glowing orb thing so I probably should have used that one for the video but this is the one that I've started painting so I'll stick to it but I'm just painting the crown here gold I also paint the sigil gold and I usually only paint the raised edges but because of the quality of my brush I actually do maybe the worst job I've ever done on one of these and kind of ended up painting the whole thing gold so I'm gonna have to come back later reapply black and clean that up Moving back to the shield, I am painting the raised sigil here, gold. This is actually quite easy to do because it's um, very well like risen from the others, so it's kind of easy to keep the gold separate. Um, and I think that, yeah, it's starting to make it really pop in the center, which is exciting. And then I started doing this, I'm not sure exactly which one of my models, but I noticed that the circles um, kind of could look ornate. So I've been painting the center of these circles gold whenever I see this pattern. And I think it just kind of gives it kind of maybe a circuitry, like a motherboard kind of thing, how, you know, gold's a good conductor. And I just think it kind of brings a little bit more interest into the model. Then for the face, I'm going to use a uh, Pallid Witch Flesh, which is a layer paint. I usually use Corax White, but I just wasn't feeling it today. I don't know why I went for this paint. I thought maybe it was maybe a brighter white and it matches the face of the Lich Guard because, you know, the Immortals have that white stripe down their face and, um, you know, there's a few that have kind of a little bit of white, but it seems like the Lich Guard's entire face is completely white except obviously for the glowing eyes. So I thought maybe this would be a good um, paint to do, but because of the black primer, it did take a couple of coats. Then once that was done, I got the moot green color out from before. 
and I'm just trying to put the ominous eye glow in. And then I notice as well on the shield, there's these glowing orb balls. So I wanted to paint them green as well. But because I'm a dumb dumb head, after I finished painting these, I realized there was a green orb on the back of the shield. So I rotated it around and immediately rubbed all of the green paint off in my finger. So then I had to reapply it, but I'd kind of gotten it on the gold. So, I mean, I really should be using like some sort of holder thing for it, but anyway. And then the blade I'm meant to do like as a hyperphase blade where it kind of blends to black and yellow and white, which these really scare me because I am not good at blending at all. So for now, I'm just going to put it as a moot green base and I'll come back later when I'm feeling braver and uh, have another crack at it. So here I'm going to try mixing two different colors, phalanx yellow and moot green. Color mixing is something that I have really don't do very much. I actually did it more when I started and then I went and bought a lot of different paints and I kind of stopped doing it. So I've kind of tried to make it a glaze consistency here, which in my understanding is just like a really watered down approach. And then you can just keep applying layers um, to kind of build up a bit of a gradient. However, here I hadn't really decided which part should be bright yellow and which part should be like the moot green and I kind of just applied the glaze over the whole thing so it kind of doesn't have that nice gradient but in hindsight I should have really just picked either the tip of the blade or the black of, back of the blade and just worked out from there but as I said this is kind of like new area for me and I'm just kind of learning so I'm using Nuln Oil to use the black glaze, but I could have got a bad and black and watered it down. Um, but I thought that since I had the Nuln Oil, I might as well use it. And I probably should have watered it down rather than getting it straight out of the jar because it is really thick and um, dark as you can see here. <laughs> I'm also trying to get some of it in the cracks to kind of darken the cracks, but then I ended up just getting the paint absolutely everywhere which is um not good so i'm trying to go back and just like clean it up but yeah i'm really making a horrible mess out of it so i thought oh i'll get rid of some of the null oil on the other side um but yeah obviously i'm a beginner and this it's a bit of a mess While I had the Nuln Oil out, I thought I would try and do the faces because they were just very white, um, which kind of had a cool effect, but I thought maybe dirtying them up a bit and giving them a bit of, um, you know, depth to it might kind of work. And there's also some silvery bits as well that I'm just trying to put some Nuln Oil on, like the leg bones if you can call them bones um and then the cords in the gut area and stuff like that that i'm just trying to create some depth and as well on the shield so now i've just got straight phalanx yellow so not mixed in with any of the moot green and i'm just going to do some edge highlighting here edge highlighting is another skill that I am not very good at. Um, you can see here almost no paint is coming off the brush um, but now I'm kind of applying a little bit more pressure and you can kind of see just the thinnest yellow line coming through now. And the reason why I'm using phalanx yellow is because that's the same yellow that I mixed in with um, the moot green so it kind of brings it all together a little bit and you know you should always kind of edge highlight with a lighter color i'm not really sure on why the color theory of that is the case but um that's what i've always seen done and you can also see there's a little nodule there that i could have cleaned off the knife um here so i guess it really shows that um prepping your models is such an important step to get right even though i find it really boring sometimes 
So now I'm trying it again um, on a different blade, but this time a little bit thicker on the edge highlight. Um, but I think they kind of come out not too bad in the end. And then this is my favorite color. It's my only non-Citadel paint. It's this metallic blue-green Mr. Hobby paint. And I kind of use it for any sort of like sci-fi color. <laughs> so like anything that's not gauze energy that's green, um, but it's kind of like Necron advanced technology. And so here I'm just painting the tips of the blades, any of these kind of like I don't know what you call them, claw things. Um, I'm just painting those. And I also realized that one of the uh, models has this like ball on his head. And my original instinct was just to paint it green, but I thought maybe, you know, that's sort of like a control node kind of thing and it's not really gauze energy so I ended up painting it this metallic blue green while I had it out and I think it kind of looked pretty cool. Um, you might be wondering why I'm using a Berserker blood shade on this um, but I thought it might actually make the gold kind of be a bit more richer. <laughs> I don't know if that's a real word um, but I thought that it might help bring out sort of the goldness of it compared to the brass. So I'm just applying a really thin coat over that and trying to let it pull into any of the recesses that you can see there. And now that it's um, dried, I am going over with the whiter color again. I think I'm using which tone or whatever it's called, but you can use any like Corax white or anything. And I'm just trying to get the edges of the face now because I realized it was a little bit too dark with after the wash. And I think this kind of just helps bring out um, the edges. And with the gold dried as well, um, I'm kind of just trying to come back here and just get the edges of the gold um, with a fresh coat so it doesn't have any of the Berserker blood shade on it and it just kind of gives it like a little bit of an edge highlight um, which is something I don't really do very often with metallics but I thought I'd give it a try so any of these sort of like beveled edges here I'm just kind of trying to just catch the edge and make them gold it's a bit hard to um, tell on this camera because it's got a bit of a yellow light already um, but I think it makes kind of like a subtle effect and then yeah the ball on the belt I'm just kind of trying to paint the middle part gold as well but I think it kind of comes up okay if you've watched any of my basing videos before I usually use a Martian iron crust or um, the technical astro granite one um, but before you like skip ahead because you've seen it a dozen times before I actually try something uh, quite different um, on this one so I wanted to use my expensive desert basing sand that I bought and I used to use this on the model of the month but I haven't been doing models of the month because I'm not able to get into a Warhammer store and so it's kind of just been sitting here unused so I thought I'd try and see how it turns out trying to convert this into the same kind of alien moon planet um, base that I go with with my other models so here I'm just applying um, some PVA glue and getting it completely over the dining table so hopefully my wife doesn't watch me in this section so we're all covered it's time to dip them into the sand mixture so I'm trying my best to uh, do that but I obviously forgot that I was filming and um, <laughs> you, all you can see is my hand and you can see I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt because it's very freezing cold in Australia at the moment which is probably not something you would expect because we're such a hot country all the time but we're going through a bit of a cold snap so I'm just like trying to pinch on some sand on here just to get into the edges and then dust off any excess 
And then an important step is you actually want to dilute some PVA glue um, with water. So it's like, again, kind of like a glaze consistency. And then you go over the top of each of them and like seal them in. And if you skip this step, um, you know, the little flecks of, you know, dirt and rocks will actually come off. You don't want to make it too wet because it'll like, you know, um, undo the original gluing, but you kind of just want to create like a thin film over the top. But then if it's too thick, then you lose some of the texture. So here I'm using my Rust-Oleum flat gray primer. And I find this is actually like a really good um, hack for doing basing quickly because with the gray color, it's already the color that I want it to be. Um, so, you know, it saves you a lot of time than having to go and paint them all with like a storm vermin fur gray or like any other sort of gray color. You can kind of like just jump ahead to that step. But if you don't have that, just use white or black and just, you know, paint it gray. Um, I still do use a little bit of storm vermin fur just because I find that the gray that comes out of the can is kind of like a bluey gray and this just kind of adds an extra depth of like a different colored gray so i leave some of the base in gray and just dab on some of this i think this technique is called like overbrushing because um i'm not uh you know i've got a lot of paint on the dry brush now i'm doing like normal dry brushing so i've got a phoenix um phoenician purple sorry and I'm just dry brushing that onto the base and I'm just trying to get it to some areas, not all of it, um, just so that we can bring out that purple kind of color. And, uh, you know, I do this to kind of give the impression of like an alien moon or something, you know, like it's not, it's not from earth, you know, these colors. And the Chala Lilac is just a lighter purple. And this just kind of catches the tops of the um, pebbles and rocks and really just brings out any, um, you know, highlights, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Um, and then finally, you know, you just want to paint the rims. You can paint them any color. I'm kind of a sucker for the classic black. At the beginning, I thought it was kind of boring because, like, the bases start off as black. But I kind of found that it really makes the rest of the decoration on the base um, pop. If you have that black, it kind of like diverts the eye. And now I'm gonna use some super glue. So usually I use the Citadel plastic glue. And I've found this trick online where you can put it in the fridge in a Ziploc, like a freezer bag, and it stops the super glue from hardening. Um, that's not what's happening here. I just completely ran out. Um, so it, that's a really good trick if you uh, use super glue is just keep it in your fridge in an airtight container. But I had to just throw that one out and I got a new one instead. And I'm just kind of figuring out where on the, the base I want it to go. The problem with doing this is like there's no footholds for the model. Um, so that's why I'm using super glue to just make sure it has a really good connection. Like even just like a very small contact area will hold. And I'm just trying to position him somewhere that I think looks interesting and dynamic pose. And then it's time to glue on the shield. You know, I'd really like to get into magnetizing and having like different like connections so you could have different weapon configurations but um i'm just kind of struggling at the moment just getting them painted <laughs> and just with one weapon let alone that sort of um stuff but i really do like these models with the amount of positioning that you can do like you can really give them expressive poses and a bit of personality which I really haven't seen very much in the Necrons that I've used. Like the flayed ones were pretty nightmarish to put together. Um, the Immortals, um, Death Marks and Warriors are all kind of monopose almost um, without doing some like kit bashing. But these just, yeah, it was super easy to um, position and 
um, style. So I like really liked how this model turned out. He looks like he's, you know, in the middle of action, deflecting something. And now that the model is upright and everything's like glued on properly, I'm just putting um, a coat of Agrax Earthshade over all the brass. Um, I find that without it, the brass can kind of look uh, like toy or plasticky. I mean, it is plastic, so <laughs> I guess that makes sense. But um, I find that by putting some Agrax Earthshade over it really kind of enriches and deepens the model. And then there's also the armor as well. And the base still looks a little bit boring as is. If I had some skulls or some other stuff, that would be really cool. But I've just got this uh, alien turquoise grass. And I find that, yeah, the green and the purple really um, pop off. So I'm just using some PVA glue and just like gluing some tufts on to the model. And I just feel like it kind of just brings a little bit of life. But I think you're meant to use at least two different types of brass to make it look, you know, real. But these bases are pretty small. So I'm really happy with how these turned out. I think each one of these models in this unit like really brings a lot of personality and character, which, yeah, as I said before, it's not super common in the Necron infantry. I guess that's the downside of just being robots is you lose some of that individuality compared to say like orcs or something. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. It did take me a very long time to put this video together. I'm also a little bit burnt out um, recently, so I haven't been doing as much painting and videos. Uh, I might do a dedicated video about burnout and my 18 month check-in. But if you did enjoy this video, please uh, consider leaving a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. I know that all YouTubers ask for it and it's always kind of a little bit pathetic and begging at the end of the video, but yeah, it would be uh, mean a lot to me if you did. Anyway, um, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.